Canada countries defined. Canada is a country in North America. Its ten provinces and three territories extend from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and northward into the Arctic Ocean, covering over 9.98 million square kilometers, 3.85 million square miles, making it the world's second largest country by total area. Its southern and western border with the United States, stretching 8,891 kilometers, 5,525 mi is the world's longest binational land border. Canada's capital is Ottawa, and its three largest metropolitan areas are Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. Indigenous peoples have continuously inhabited what is now Canada for thousands of years. Beginning in the 16th century, British and French expeditions explored and later settled along the Atlantic coast. As a consequence of various armed conflicts, France ceded nearly all of its colonies in North America in 1763. In 1867, with the union of three British North American colonies through Confederation, Canada was formed as a federal dominion of four provinces. This began an accretion of provinces and territories and a process of increasing autonomy from the United Kingdom. This widening autonomy was highlighted by the Statute of Westminster 1931 and culminated in the Canada Act 1982, which severed the vestiges of legal dependence on the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Canada is a parliamentary democracy and a constitutional monarchy in the Westminster tradition. The country's head of government is the Prime Minister, who holds office by virtue of their ability to command the confidence of the elected House of Commons, and is appointed by the Governor-General, representing the Monarch of Canada, the head of state. The country is a Commonwealth realm and is officially bilingual English and French at the federal level. It ranks among the highest in international measurements of government, transparency, civil liberties, quality of life, economic freedom, education, gender equality, and environmental sustainability. It is one of the world's most ethnically diverse and multicultural nations, the product of large-scale immigration. Canada's long and complex relationship with the United States has had a significant impact on its economy and culture. A highly developed country, Canada has the 24th highest nominal per capita income globally and the 16th highest ranking on the Human Development Index. Its advanced economy is the 8th largest in the world, relying chiefly upon its abundant natural resources and well-developed international trade networks. Canada is part of several major international and intergovernmental institutions or groupings including the United Nations, NATO, the G7, the Group of Ten, the G20, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, the World Trade Organization, WTO, the Commonwealth of Nations, the Arctic Council, the Organization Internationale de la Francophonie, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, and the Organization of American States. Etymology While a variety of theories have been postulated for the etymological origins of Canada, the name is now accepted as coming from the St. Lawrence, Iroquoian word Canada, meaning village or settlement. In 1535, indigenous inhabitants of the present-day Quebec City region used the word to direct French explorer Jacques Cartier to the village of Stadacona. Cartier later used the word Canada to refer not only to that particular village, but to the entire area subject to Donacona the chief at Stadacona, by 1545, European books and maps had begun referring to this small region along the St. Lawrence River as Canada. From the 16th to the early 18th century, Canada referred to the part of New France that lay along the St. Lawrence River. In 1791, the area became two British colonies called Upper Canada and Lower Canada. These two colonies were collectively named the Canadas until their union as the British Province of Canada in 1841. 
Upon confederation in 1867, Canada was adopted as the legal name for the new country at the London Conference, and the word Dominion was conferred as the country's title. By the 1950s, the term Dominion of Canada was no longer used by the United Kingdom, which considered Canada a realm of the Commonwealth. The government of Louis St. Laurent ended the practice of using Dominion in the Statutes of Canada in 1951. The Canada Act 1982, which brought the Constitution of Canada fully under Canadian control, referred only to Canada. Later that year, the name of the national holiday was changed from Dominion Day to Canada Day. The term Dominion was used to distinguish the federal government from the provinces, though after the Second World War the term federal had replaced Dominion. History Indigenous Peoples Indigenous peoples in present-day Canada include the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis, the last being of mixed descent, who originated in the mid-17th century when First Nations people married European settlers and subsequently developed their own identity. The first inhabitants of North America are generally hypothesized to have migrated from Siberia by way of the Bering Land Bridge and arrived at least 14,000 years ago. The Paleo-Indian archaeological sites at Old Crow Flats and Bluefish Caves are two of the oldest sites of human habitation in Canada. The characteristics of indigenous societies included permanent settlements, agriculture, complex societal hierarchies, and trading networks. Some of these cultures had collapsed by the time European explorers arrived in the late 15th and early 16th centuries and have only been discovered through archaeological investigations. The indigenous population at the time of the first European settlements is estimated to have been between 200,000 and 2 million, with a figure of 500,000 accepted by Canada's Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples. As a consequence of European colonization, the indigenous population declined by 40 to 80 percent, and several First Nations, such as the Beothuk, disappeared. The decline is attributed to several causes, including the transfer of European diseases, such as influenza, measles, and smallpox, to which they had no natural immunity, conflicts over the fur trade, conflicts with the colonial authorities and settlers, and the loss of indigenous lands to settlers and the subsequent collapse of several nations' self-sufficiency. Although not without conflict, European-Canadians' early interactions with First Nations and Inuit populations were relatively peaceful. First Nations and Métis peoples played a critical part in the development of European colonies in Canada, particularly for their role in assisting European coureurs des boys and voyagers in their explorations of the continent during the North American fur trade. The Crown and Indigenous peoples began interactions during the European colonization period, though the Inuit, in general, had more limited interaction with European settlers. From the late 18th century, European Canadians forced indigenous peoples to assimilate into a Western culture. These attempts reached a climax in the late 19th and early 20th centuries with forced integration and relocations. A period of redress is underway which started with the appointment of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada by the Government of Canada in 2008. European Colonization it is believed that the first European to explore the east coast of Canada was Norse explorer Leif Erikson. In approximately 1000 AD, the Norse built a small short-lived encampment that was occupied sporadically for perhaps 20 years at Elance Ox Meadows on the northern tip of Newfoundland. No further European exploration occurred until 1497, when Italian seafarer John Cabot explored and claimed Canada's Atlantic coast in the name of King Henry Roman VII of England. In 1534, French explorer Jacques Cartier explored the Gulf of St. Lawrence where, on July 24, he planted a 10-meter 33ft cross bearing the words, Long live the King of France, and took possession of the territory New France in the name of King Francis I. The early 16th century saw European mariners, 
with navigational techniques pioneered by the Basque and Portuguese established seasonal whaling and fishing outposts along the Atlantic coast. In general, early settlements during the Age of Discovery appear to have been short-lived due to a combination of the harsh climate, problems with navigating trade routes and competing outputs in Scandinavia. In 1583, Sir Humphrey Gilbert, by the royal prerogative of Queen Elizabeth I, founded St. John's, Newfoundland, as the first North American English seasonal camp. In 1600, the French established their first seasonal trading post at Tadassac along the St. Lawrence. French explorer Samuel de Champlain arrived in 1603 and established the first permanent year-round European settlements at Port Royal in 1605 and Quebec City in 1608. Among the colonists of New France, Canadians extensively settled the St. Lawrence River Valley and Acadians settled the present-day Maritimes, while fur traders and Catholic missionaries explored the Great Lakes, Hudson Bay, and the Mississippi watershed to Louisiana. The Beaver Wars broke out in the mid-17th century over control of the North American fur trade. The English established additional settlements in Newfoundland in 1610, along with settlements in the 13 colonies to the south. A series of four wars erupted in colonial North America between 1689 and 1763. The later wars of the period constituted the North American theater of the Seven Years' War. Mainland Nova Scotia came under British rule with the 1713 Treaty of Utrecht, and Canada and most of New France came under British rule in 1763 after the Seven Years' War. British North America. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 established First Nation Treaty rights, created the province of Quebec out of New France, and annexed Cape Breton Island to Nova Scotia. St. John's Island, now Prince Edward Island, became a separate colony in 1769. To avert conflict in Quebec, the British Parliament passed the Quebec Act 1774 expanding Quebec's territory to the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. More importantly, the Quebec Act afforded Quebec special autonomy and rights of self-administration at a time when the 13 colonies were increasingly agitating against British rule. It re-established the French language, Catholic faith, and French civil law there, staving off the growth of an independence movement in contrast to the 13 colonies. The proclamation and the Quebec Act in turn angered many residents of the 13 colonies, further fueling anti-British sentiment in the years prior to the American Revolution. After the successful American War of Independence, the 1783 Treaty of Paris recognized the independence of the newly formed United States and set the terms of peace, ceding British North American territories south of the Great Lakes and east of the Mississippi River to the new country. The American War of Independence also caused a large outmigration of Loyalists, the settlers who had fought against American independence. Many moved to Canada, particularly Atlantic Canada, where their arrival changed the demographic distribution of the existing territories. New Brunswick was in turn split from Nova Scotia as part of a reorganization of Loyalist settlements in the Maritimes, which led to the incorporation of St. John, New Brunswick, as Canada's first city. To accommodate the influx of English-speaking Loyalists in central Canada, the Constitutional Act of 1791 divided the province of Canada into French-speaking Lower Canada, later Quebec, and English-speaking Upper Canada, later Ontario, granting each its own elected legislative assembly. The Canadas were the main front in the War of 1812 between the United States and the United Kingdom. Peace came in 1815. No boundaries were changed. Immigration resumed at a higher level, with over 960,000 arrivals from Britain between 1815 and 1850. New arrivals included refugees escaping the Great Irish Famine as well as Gaelic-speaking Scots displaced by the Highland Clearances. 
Infectious diseases killed between 25 and 33 percent of Europeans who immigrated to Canada before 1891. The desire for responsible government resulted in the abortive rebellions of 1837. The Durham Report subsequently recommended responsible government and the assimilation of French Canadians into English culture. The Act of Union 1840 merged the Canadas into a united province of Canada, and responsible government was established for all provinces of British North America east of Lake Superior by 1855. The signing of the Oregon Treaty by Britain and the United States in 1846 ended the Oregon boundary dispute, extending the border westward along the 49th parallel. This paved the way for British colonies on Vancouver Island 1849 and in British Columbia 1858. The Anglo-Russian Treaty of St. Petersburg 1825 established the border along the Pacific coast but even after the U.S.-Alaska Purchase of 1860, seven disputes continued about the exact demarcation of the Alaska-Yukon and Alaska-B.C. border. Confederation and Expansion Following several constitutional conferences, the British North America Act 1867 officially proclaimed Canadian Confederation on July 1, 1867, initially with four provinces, Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. Canada assumed control of Rupert's Land and the Northwestern Territory to form the Northwest Territories, where the Métis grievances ignited the Red River Rebellion and the creation of the province of Manitoba in July 1870. British Columbia and Vancouver Island, which had been united in 1866, joined the Confederation in 1871 on the promise of a transcontinental railway extending to Victoria in the province within ten, while Prince Edward Island joined in 1873. In 1898, during the Klondike Gold Rush in the Northwest Territories, Parliament created the Yukon Territory. Alberta and Saskatchewan became provinces in 1905. Between 1871 and 1896, Almost one quarter of the Canadian population emigrated south to the U.S. to open the West and encourage European immigration. Parliament approved sponsoring the construction of three transcontinental railways, including the Canadian Pacific Railway, opening the prairies to settlement with the Dominion Lands Act, and establishing the Northwest Mounted Police to assert its authority over this territory. This period of westward expansion and nation-building resulted in the displacement of many indigenous peoples of the Canadian prairies to Indian reserves, clearing the way for ethnic European bloc settlements. This caused the collapse of the Plains bison in western Canada and the introduction of European cattle farms and wheat fields dominating the land. The indigenous peoples saw widespread famine and disease due to the loss of the bison and their traditional hunting lands. The federal government did provide emergency relief on condition of the indigenous peoples moving to the reserves. During this time, Canada introduced the Indian Act extending its control over the First Nations to education, government, and legal rights. Geography by total area, including its waters, Canada is the second largest country in the world after Russia. By land area alone, Canada ranks fourth due to having the world's largest area of freshwater lakes. Stretching from the Atlantic Ocean in the east along the Arctic Ocean to the north and to the Pacific Ocean in the west, the country encompasses 9,984,670 km to 3,855,100 SU mi of territory. Canada also has vast maritime terrain, with the world's longest coastline of 243,042 kilometers, 150, 1,019 mi. In addition to sharing the world's largest land border with the United States spanning 8,891 km, 5,525 mi, Canada shares a land border with Greenland and hence the Kingdom of Denmark to the northeast on Hans Island and a maritime boundary with France's overseas collectivity of St. Pierre and Miquelon to the southeast. 
Canada is also home to the world's northernmost settlement, Canadian Forces Station Alert, on the northern tip of Ellesmere Island, a latitude 82.5 degrees, and which lies 817 kilometers 508 mi from the North Pole. Canada can be divided into seven physiographic regions, the Canadian Shield, the Interior Plains, the Great Lakes Saint, Lawrence Lowlands, the Appalachian Region, the Western Cordillera, Hudson Bay Lowlands, and the Arctic Archipelago. Boreal forests prevail throughout the country, ice is prominent in northern Arctic regions and through the Rocky Mountains, and the relatively flat Canadian prairies in the southwest facilitate productive agriculture. The Great Lakes feed the St. Lawrence River in the southeast, where the lowlands host much of Canada's economic output. Canada has over 2 million lakes of 560, three of which are larger than 100 km 239 SQMI, containing much of the world's fresh water. There are also fresh water glaciers in the Canadian Rockies, the Coast Mountains, and the Arctic Cordillera. Canada is geologically active, having many earthquakes and potentially active volcanoes, notably Mount Meagre Massif, Mount Garibaldi, Mount Cayley, and the Mount Eds is a volcanic complex. Climate. Average winter and summer high temperatures across Canada vary from region to region. Winters can be harsh in many parts of the country, particularly in the interior and prairie provinces, which experience a continental climate, where daily average temperatures are near minus 15 degrees C, 5 degrees F, but can drop below minus 40 degrees C, minus 40 degrees F with severe wind chills. In non-coastal regions, snow can cover the ground for almost six months of the year, while in parts of the north, snow can persist year-round. Coastal British Columbia has a temperate climate with a mild and rainy winter. On the east and west coasts, average high temperatures are generally in the low 20s degrees C 70s degrees F, while between the coasts, the average summer high temperature ranges from 25 to 30 degrees C 77 to 86 degrees F, with temperatures in some interior locations occasionally exceeding 40 degrees C 104 degrees F. Much of northern Canada is covered by ice and permafrost. The future of the permafrost is uncertain because the Arctic has been warming at three times the global average as a result of climate change in Canada. Canada's annual average temperature over land has warmed by 1.7 degrees C, 3.1 degrees F, with changes ranging from 1.1 to 2.3 degrees C, 2.0 to 4.1 degrees F in various regions since 1948. The rate of warming has been higher across the north and in the prairies. In the southern regions of Canada, air pollution from both Canada and the United States caused by metal smelting, burning coal to power utilities, and vehicle emissions has resulted in acid rain, which has severely impacted waterways, forest growth, and agricultural productivity in Canada. Biodiversity Canada is divided into 15 terrestrial and 5 marine ecozones. These ecozones encompass over 80,000 classified species of Canadian wildlife, with an equal number yet to be formally recognized or discovered. Although Canada has a low percentage of endemic species compared to other countries due to human activities, invasive species, and environmental issues in the country, there are currently more than 800 species at risk of being lost. About 65% of Canada's resident species are considered secure. Over half of Canada's landscape is intact and relatively free of human development. The boreal forest of Canada is considered to be the largest intact forest on Earth, with approximately 3 million km to 1 million, 200,000 SQMI undisturbed by roads, cities, or industry. Since the end of the last glacial period, Canada has consisted of eight distinct forest regions, with 42% of its land area covered by forests, approximately 8% of the world's forested land. Approximately 12.1% of the nation's land mass and freshwater are conservation areas, 
including 11.4% designated as protected areas. Approximately 13.8% of its territorial waters are conserved, including 8.9% designated as protected areas. Canada's first national park, Banff National Park, established in 1885, spans 6,641 square kilometers 2564 sq mi of mountainous terrain with many glaciers and ice fields, dense coniferous forest and alpine landscapes. Canada's oldest provincial park, Albanquin Provincial Park, established in 1893, covers an area of 7,653.45 square kilometers 2955.1 sq mi. It is dominated by old-growth forest with over 2,400 lakes and 1,200 kilometers of streams and rivers. Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area is the world's largest freshwater protected area, spanning roughly 10,000 square kilometers, 3,900 eskumai of lake. It's overlaying freshwater and associated shoreline on 60 square kilometers, 23 eskumai of islands and mainland. Canada's largest national wildlife region is the Scott Islands Marine National Wildlife Area, which spans 11,570.65 square kilometers, 4,467.45 sq mi, and protects critical breeding and nesting habitat for over 40% of British Columbia seabirds. Canada's 18 UNESCO biosphere reserves cover a total area of 235,000 square kilometers, 91,000 sq mi. Government and Politics Canada is described as a full democracy, with a tradition of liberalism and an egalitarian, moderate political ideology. An emphasis on social justice has been a distinguishing element of Canada's political culture. Peace, order and good government, alongside an implied Bill of Rights, are founding principles of the Canadian government. At the federal level, Canada has been dominated by two relatively centrist parties practicing brokerage politics, the centre-left-leaning Liberal Party of Canada and the centre-right-leaning Conservative Party of Canada, or its predecessors. The historically predominant Liberal Party position themselves at the centre of the Canadian political spectrum, with the Conservative Party positioned on the right and the New Democratic Party occupying the left. Far-right and far-left politics have never been a prominent force in Canadian society. Five parties had representatives elected to the Parliament in the 2021 election of the Liberal Party, who currently form a minority government, the Conservative Party, who are the official opposition, the New Democratic Party, the Bloc Quebecois, and the Green Party of Canada. Canada has a parliamentary system within the context of a constitutional monarchy, the monarchy of Canada being the foundation of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The reigning monarch is King Charles Roman III, who is also monarch of 14 other Commonwealth countries and each of Canada's 10 provinces. The person who is the Canadian monarch is the same as the British monarch, although the two institutions are separate. The monarch appoints a representative, the governor-general, with the advice of the prime minister, to carry out most of their federal royal duties in Canada. While the monarchy is the source of authority in Canada, in practice its position is mainly symbolic. The use of the executive powers is directed by the cabinet, a committee of ministers of the crown responsible to the elected House of Commons and chosen and headed by the prime minister at present Justin Trudeau, the head of government. The governor-general or monarch may, though, in certain crisis situations, exercise their power without ministerial advice. To ensure the stability of government, the governor-general will usually appoint as prime minister the individual who is the current leader of the political party that can obtain the confidence of a plurality in the House of Commons. The Prime Minister's Office PMO is thus one of the most powerful institutions in government, initiating most legislation for parliamentary approval and selecting for appointment by the Crown, besides the aforementioned, the Governor-General, Lieutenant Governors, Senators, 
federal court judges, and heads of crown corporations and government agencies. The leader of the party with the second most seats usually becomes the leader of the official opposition and is part of an adversarial parliamentary system intended to keep the government in check. Each of the 338 members of Parliament in the House of Commons is elected by simple plurality in an electoral district or riding. General elections in Canada must be called by the Governor-General, either on the advice of the Prime Minister or if the government loses a confidence vote in the House. The Constitution Act, 1982, requires that no more than five years pass between elections, although the Canada Elections Act limits this to four years with a fixed election date in October. The 105 members of the Senate, whose seats are apportioned on a regional basis, serve until age 75. Canadian federalism divides government responsibilities between the federal government and the ten provinces. Provincial legislatures are unicameral and operate in parliamentary fashion similar to the House of Commons. Canada's three territories also have legislatures, but these are not sovereign and have fewer constitutional responsibilities than the provinces. The territorial legislatures also differ structurally from their provincial counterparts. The Bank of Canada is the central bank of the country. The Minister of Finance and Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry use the Statistics Canada Agency for Financial Planning and Economic Policy Development. The Bank of Canada is the sole authority authorized to issue currency in the form of Canadian bank notes. The bank does not issue Canadian coins. They are issued by the Royal Canadian Mint. Law. The Constitution of Canada is the supreme law of the country and consists of written text and unwritten conventions. The Constitution Act, 1867, known as the British North America Act, 1867 prior to 1982, affirmed governance based on parliamentary precedent and divided powers between the federal and provincial governments. The Statute of Westminster, 1931, granted full autonomy, and the Constitution Act, 1982, ended all legislative ties to Britain, as well as adding a constitutional amending formula and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The Charter guarantees basic rights and freedoms that usually cannot be overridden by any government, though a notwithstanding clause allows Parliament and the provincial legislatures to override certain sections of the Charter for a period of five years. Canada's judiciary plays an important role in interpreting laws and has the power to strike down acts of Parliament that violate the Constitution. The Supreme Court of Canada is the highest court and final arbiter and has been led since December 18, 2017, by Richard Wagner, the Chief Justice of Canada. The Governor-General appoints its nine members on the advice of the Prime Minister and Minister of Justice. All judges at the superior and appellate levels are appointed after consultation with non-governmental legal bodies. The federal cabinet also appoints justices to superior courts in the provincial and territorial jurisdictions. Common law prevails everywhere except in Quebec, where civil law predominates. Criminal law is solely a federal responsibility and is uniform throughout Canada. Law enforcement, including criminal courts, is officially a provincial responsibility, conducted by provincial and municipal police forces. In most rural and some urban areas, policing responsibilities are contracted to the Federal Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Canadian Aboriginal law provides certain constitutionally recognized rights to land and traditional practices for Indigenous groups in Canada. Various treaties and case laws were established to mediate relations between Europeans and many Indigenous peoples. Most notably, a series of eleven treaties known as the Numbered Treaties were signed between the Indigenous peoples and the reigning monarch of Canada between 1871 and 1921. These treaties are agreements between the Canadian Crown and Council with the duty to consult and accommodate. The role of Aboriginal law 
and the rights they support were reaffirmed by Section 35 of the Constitution, Act, 1982. These rights may include provision of services, such as health care through the Indian Health Transfer Policy, and exemption from taxation. Foreign Relations and Military Canada is recognized as a middle power for its role in international affairs with a tendency to pursue multilateral solutions. Canada's foreign policy based on international peacekeeping and security is carried out through coalitions and international organizations and through the work of numerous federal institutions. Canada's peacekeeping role during the 20th century has played a major role in its global image. The strategy of the Canadian government's foreign aid policy reflects an emphasis to meet the Millennium Development Goals, while also providing assistance in response to foreign humanitarian crises. Canada was a founding member of the United Nations and has membership in the World Trade Organization, the G20, and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD. Canada is also a member of various other international and regional organizations and forums for economic and cultural affairs. Canada acceded to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights in 1976. Canada joined the Organization of American States, OAS, in 1990 and hosted the OAS General Assembly in 2000 and the Third Summit of the Americas in 2001. Canada seeks to expand its ties to Pacific Rim economies through membership in the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, APEC. Canada and the United States share the world's longest undefended border, cooperate on military campaigns and exercises, and are each other's largest trading partner. Canada nevertheless has an independent foreign policy. For example, it maintains full relations with Cuba, and declined to participate in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Canada maintains historic ties to the United Kingdom and France and to other former British and French colonies through Canada's membership in the Commonwealth of Nations and the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. Canada is noted for having a positive relationship with the Netherlands, owing in part to its contribution to the Dutch liberation during World War Roman II, Canada's strong attachment to the British Empire and Commonwealth led to major participation in British military efforts in the Second Boer War 1899-1902, World War I 1940-1918, and World War Roman II 1939-1945. Since then, Canada has been an advocate for multilateralism, making efforts to resolve global issues in collaboration with other nations. During the Cold War, Canada was a major contributor to UN forces in the Korean War and founded the North American Aerospace Defense Command NORAD in cooperation with the United States to defend against potential aerial attacks from the... During the Suez Crisis of 1950, six future Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson eased tensions by proposing the inception of the United Nations Peacekeeping Force, for which he was awarded the 1950 Seven Nobel Peace Prize. As this was the first UN peacekeeping mission, Pearson is often credited as the inventor of the concept. Canada has since served in over 50 peacekeeping missions, including every UN peacekeeping effort until 1989, and has since maintained forces in international missions in Rwanda, the former Yugoslavia, and elsewhere. Canada has sometimes faced controversy over its involvement in foreign countries, notably in the 1993 Somalia affair. In 2001, Canada deployed troops to Afghanistan as part of the U.S. Stabilization Force, and the U.N. authorized NATO-led International Security Assistance Force. In August 2007, Canada's territorial claims in the Arctic were challenged after a Russian underwater expedition to the North Pole. Canada has considered that area to be sovereign territory since 1925. The Unified Canadian Forces CF comprised the Royal Canadian Navy, Canadian Army, and Royal Canadian Air Force. 
the nation employs a professional volunteer force of approximately 68,000 active personnel and 27,000 reserve personnel, increasing to 70, 1,530,000 respectively under strong, secure, engaged with a subcomponent of approximately 5,000 Canadian Rangers. In 2021, Canada's military expenditure totaled approximately 6.4 billion, or around 1.3 percent of the country's gross domestic product GDP. Canada's total military expenditure is expected to reach 2.7 billion by 2027. Canada's military currently has over 3,000 personnel deployed overseas in multiple operations, such as Operation Snow Goose in Cyprus, Operation Unifier supporting Ukraine, Operation Carrot in the Caribbean Sea, and Operation Impact a Coalition for the Military Intervention Against ISIL. Provinces and Territories Canada is a federation composed of ten provinces and three territories. In turn, these may be grouped into four main regions, Western Canada, Central Canada, Atlantic Canada, and Northern Canada. Eastern Canada refers to Central Canada and Atlantic Canada together. Provinces and territories have responsibility for social programs such as health care, education, and welfare, as well as administration of justice but not criminal law. Together, the provinces collect more revenue than the federal government, an almost unique structure among federations in the world. Using its spending powers, the federal government can initiate national policies in provincial areas, such as the Canada Health Act. The provinces can opt out of these, but rarely do so in practice. Equalization payments are made by the federal government to ensure reasonably uniform standards of services and taxation are kept between the richer and poorer provinces. The major difference between a Canadian province and a territory is that provinces receive their power and authority from the Constitution Act 1867, whereas territorial governments have powers delegated to them by the Parliament of Canada. The powers flowing from the Constitution Act, 1867, are divided between the federal government and the provincial governments to exercise exclusively. As the division of powers between the federal government and the provinces is defined in the Constitution, any changes require a constitutional amendment. The territories being creatures of the federal government, Changes to their role and division of powers may be performed unilaterally by the Parliament of Canada. Economy Canada has a highly developed mixed market economy, with the world's eighth largest economy as of 2022, and a nominal GDP of approximately US$221 trillion. It is one of the least corrupt countries in the world, and is one of the world's largest trading nations with a highly globalized economy. Canada mixed economy ranks above the U.S. and most Western European nations on the Heritage Foundation's Index of Economic Freedom and experiencing a relatively low level of income disparity. The country's average household disposable income per capita is well above the OECD average. The Toronto Stock Exchange is the ninth largest stock exchange in the world by market capitalization listing over 1,500 companies with a combined market capitalization of over U.S. trillion. In 2021, Canadian trade in goods and services reached 16 trillion. Canada's exports totaled over 37 billion, while its imported goods were worth over 31 billion, of which approximately 91 billion originated from the United States. In 2018, Canada had a trade deficit in goods of $2 billion and a trade deficit in services of $5 billion. Since the early 20th century, the growth of Canada's manufacturing, mining, and service sectors has transformed the nation from a largely rural economy to an urbanized industrial one. Like many other developed countries, the Canadian economy is dominated by the service industry, which employs about three-quarters of the country's workforce. Among developed countries, Canada has an unusually important primary sector, 
of which the forestry and petroleum industries are the most prominent components. Canada's economic integration with the United States has increased significantly since World War Roman II. The Automotive Products Trade Agreement of 1965 opened Canada's borders to trade in the automobile manufacturing industry. In the 1970s, concerns over energy, self-sufficiency, and foreign ownership in the manufacturing sectors prompted Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau's Liberal government to enact the National Energy Program NEP and the Foreign Investment in the 1980s, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney's progressive conservatives abolished the NEP and changed the name of FIRA to Investment Canada to encourage foreign investment. The Canada-United States Free Trade Agreement FTA of 1988 eliminated tariffs between the two countries, while the North American Free Trade Agreement NAFTA expanded the free trade zone to include Mexico in 1994, later replaced by the Canada-United States-Mexico Agreement. Canada has a strong cooperative banking sector, with the world's highest per capita membership in credit unions. Canada is one of the few developed nations that are net exporters of energy. Atlantic Canada possesses vast offshore deposits of natural gas, and Alberta also hosts large oil and gas resources. The vastness of the Athabasca oil sands and other assets results in Canada having a 13% share of global oil reserves, comprising the world's third largest share after Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. Canada is additionally one of the world's largest suppliers of agricultural products. The Canadian prairies are one of the most important global producers of wheat, canola, and other grains. The Federal Department of Natural Resources provides statistics regarding its major exports. The country is a leading exporter of zinc, uranium, gold, nickel, platinoids, aluminum, steel, iron ore, coking coal, lead, copper, molybdenum, cobalt, and cadmium. Many towns in northern Canada, where agriculture is difficult, are sustainable because of nearby mines or sources of timber. Canada also has a sizable manufacturing sector centered in southern Ontario and Quebec, with automobiles and aeronautics representing particularly important industries. Science and Technology In 2019, Canada spent approximately $0.3 billion on domestic research and development, of which over billion was provided by the federal and provincial governments. As of 2020, the country has produced 15 Nobel laureates in physics, chemistry, and medicine, and was ranked fourth worldwide for scientific research quality in a major 2012 survey of international scientists. It is furthermore home to the headquarters of a number of global technology firms. Canada has one of the highest levels of Internet access in the world, with over 33 million users, equivalent to around 94% of its total 2014 population. Canada was ranked 15th in the Global Innovation Index in 2022. Some of the most notable scientific developments in Canada include the creation of the Myron Acaline battery, insulin, and the polio vaccine and discoveries about the interior structure of the atomic nucleus. Other major Canadian scientific contributions include the artificial cardiac pacemaker, mapping the visual cortex, the development of the electron microscope, plate tectonics, deep learning, multi-touch technology, and the identification of the first black hole, Cygnus X-1. Canada has a long history of discovery in genetics, which includes stem cells, site-directed mutagenesis, T-cell receptor and the identification of the genes that cause Fanconi anemia, cystic fibrosis and early onset Alzheimer's disease, among numerous other diseases. The Canadian Space Agency operates a highly active space program conducting deep space, planetary and aviation research and developing rockets and satellites. Canada was the third country to design and construct a satellite after the Soviet Union and the United States, with the 1962 Alouette 1 launch. Canada is a participant in the International Space Station, 
ISS, and is a pioneer in space robotics, having constructed the Canadarm, Canadarm TO, and Dexter robotic manipulators for the ISS and NASA's Space Shuttle. Since the 1960s, Canada's aerospace industry has designed and built numerous marks of satellite, including Raider Sat-1 and 2, ISIS, and MOST. Canada has also produced one of the world's most successful and widely used sounding rockets, the Black Brant. Over 1,000 Black Brants have been launched since the rocket's introduction in 1961. Demographics the 2021 Canadian census enumerated a total population of 36,991,981, an increase of around 5.2% over the 2016 figure. The main drivers of population growth are immigration and, to a lesser extent, natural growth. Canada has one of the highest per capita immigration rates in the world, driven mainly by economic policy and also family reunification. A record number of 405,000 immigrants were admitted to Canada in 2020. 1. New immigrants settle mostly in major urban areas in the country, such as Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. Canada also accepts large numbers of refugees, accounting for over 10% of annual global refugee resettlements, it was settled more than 28,000 in 2018. Canada's population density at 4.2 inhabitants per square kilometer 11 slash SQ MI is among the lowest in the world. Canada spans latitudinally from the 83rd parallel north to the 41st parallel north, and approximately 95% of the population is found south of the 55th parallel north. About four-fifths of the population lives within 150 kilometers 93 mi of the border with the contiguous United States. The most densely populated part of the country, accounting for nearly 50 percent, is the Quebec City-Windsor Corridor in southern Quebec and southern Ontario along the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. The majority of Canadians, 81.1 percent, live in family households, 12.1% report living alone, and those living with other relatives or unrelated persons reported at 6.8%. 51% of households are couples with or without children, 8.7% are single parent households, 2.9% are multi generational households, and 29.3% are single person households. Health Health care in Canada is delivered through the provincial and territorial systems of publicly funded health care, informally called Medicare. It is guided by the provisions of the Canada Health Act of 1984 and is universal. Universal access to publicly funded health services is often considered by Canadians as a fundamental value that ensures national health care insurance for everyone wherever they live in the country. Around 30% of Canadians' health care is paid for through the private sector. This mostly pays for services not covered or partially covered by Medicare, such as prescription drugs, dentistry, and optometry. Approximately 65 to 75% of Canadians have some form of supplementary health insurance related to the aforementioned reasons. Many receive it through their employers or access secondary social service programs related to extended coverage for families receiving social assistance or vulnerable demographics such as seniors, minors, and those with disabilities. In common with many other developed countries, Canada is experiencing a cost increase due to a demographic shift toward an older population, with more retirees and fewer people of working age. In 2006, the average age was 39.5 years. It rose to 42.4 years by 2018 before falling slightly to 41.9 in 2021. Life expectancy is 81.1 years. A 2016 report by the Chief Public Health Officer found that 88% of Canadians, one of the highest proportions of the population among G7 countries, indicated that they had good or very good health. 
80 percent of Canadian adults self-report having at least one major risk factor for chronic disease, smoking, physical inactivity, unhealthy eating, or excessive alcohol use. Canada has one of the highest rates of adult obesity among Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD countries attributing to approximately 2.7 million cases of diabetes to 4. Chronic diseases, cancer leading cause of death, cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases and diabetes account for 65% of deaths in Canada. In 2021, the Canadian Institute for Health Information reported that healthcare spending reached 8 billion or 12.7% of Canada's GDP for that year. Canada's per capita spending on health expenditures ranked fourth among health care systems in the OECD. Canada has performed close to or above the average on the majority of OECD health indicators since the early 2000s. Although Canada consistently ranks above the average on OECD indicators for wait times and access to care, with average scores for quality of care and use of resources. The Commonwealth Fund's 2021 report comparing the healthcare systems of the 11 most developed countries ranked Canada second to last. Identified weaknesses were comparatively higher infant mortality rate, the prevalence of chronic conditions, long wait times, poor availability of after hours care, and a lack of prescription drugs and dental coverage. Education. Education in Canada is for the most part provided publicly, funded and overseen by federal, provincial and local governments. Education is within provincial jurisdiction and the curriculum is overseen by the province. Education in Canada is generally divided into primary education, followed by secondary education and post-secondary Education in both English and French is available in most places across Canada. Canada has a large number of universities, almost all of which are publicly funded. Established in 1663, Université Laval is the oldest post-secondary institution in Canada. The largest university is the University of Toronto with over 85,000 students. Four universities are regularly ranked among the top 100 worldwide, namely University of Toronto, University of British Columbia, McGill University, and McMaster University, with a total of 18 universities ranked in the top 500 worldwide. According to a 2019 report by the OECD, Canada is one of the most educated countries in the world, the country ranks first worldwide in the number of adults having tertiary education, with over 56% of Canadian adults having attained at least an undergraduate college or university degree. Canada spends about 5.3% of its GDP on education. The country invests heavily in tertiary education more than USERO per student. As of 2014, 89% of adults aged 25 to 64 have earned the equivalent of a high school degree, compared to an OECD average of 75%. The mandatory education age ranges between 5 minus 7 to 16 minus 18 years, contributing to an adult literacy rate of 99%. Just over 60,000 children are homeschooled in the country as of 2016. The Program for International Student Assessment indicates Canadian students perform well above the OECD average, particularly in mathematics, science, and reading, ranking the overall knowledge and skills of Canadian 15-year-olds as the sixth best in the world, although these scores have been declining in recent years. Canada is a well-performing OECD country in reading literacy, mathematics, and science with the average student scoring 523.7 compared with the OECD average of 493 in 2015. Ethnicity. According to the 2021 Canadian census, over 450 ethnic or cultural origins were self-reported by Canadians. 
The major panethnic groups chosen were European 52.5%, North American 22.9%, Asia 19.3%, North American Indigenous 6.1%, African 3.8%, Latin, Central and South American 2.5%, Caribbean 2.1%, Osanian 0.3% and other 6%. Statistics Canada reports that 35.5% of the population reported multiple ethnic origins, thus the overall total is greater than 100%. The country's 10 largest self-reported specific ethnic or cultural origins in 2021 were Canadian, accounting for 15.6% of the population, followed by English 14.7%, Irish 12.1%, Scottish 12.1%, French 11.0%, German 8.1%, Chinese 4.7%, Italian 4.3%, Indian 3.7%, and Ukrainian 3.5%. Of the 36.3 million people enumerated in 2021, approximately 25.4 million reported being white, representing 69.8% of the population. The indigenous population, representing 5% or 1.8 million individuals, grew by 9.4% compared to the non-indigenous population, which grew by 5.3% from 2016 to 2021. One out of every four Canadians, or 26.5% of the population, belonged to a non-white and non-Indigenous visible minority, the largest of which in 2021 were South Asian 2.6 million people, 7.1%, Chinese 1.7 million, 4.7%, and Black 1.5 million, 4.3%. Between 2011 and 2016, the visible minority population rose by 18.4%. In 1961, less than 2% of Canada's population, about 300,000 people, were members of visible minority groups. The 2021 census indicated that 8.3 million people, or almost one quarter, 23.0% of the population reported themselves as being or having been a landed immigrant or permanent resident in Canada above the 1921 census previous record of 22.3%. In 2021, India, China, and the Philippines were the top three countries of origin for immigrants moving to Canada. Languages a multitude of languages are used by Canadians, with English and French the official languages being the mother tongues of approximately 54% and 19% of Canadians, respectively. As of the 2021 census, just over 7.8 million Canadians listed a non-official language as their mother tongue. Some of the most common non-official first languages include Mandarin 679,255 first language speakers, Punjabi 666,585, Cantonese 553,380, Spanish 538,870, Arabic 508,410, Tagalog 461,000, 150, Italian 319,505, and German 272,865. Canada's federal government practices official bilingualism, which is applied by the Commissioner of Official Languages in consonance with Section 16 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Federal Official Languages Act. English and French have equal status in federal courts, Parliament, and in all federal institutions. Citizens have the right, where there is sufficient demand, to receive federal government services in either English or French and official language minorities are guaranteed their own schools in all provinces and territories. The 1970-7 Charter of the French Language established French as the official language of Quebec. Although more than 82% of French-speaking Canadians live in Quebec. There are substantial Francophone populations in New Brunswick, 
Alberta and Manitoba, Ontario has the largest French-speaking population outside Quebec. New Brunswick, the only officially bilingual province, has a French-speaking Acadian minority constituting 33% of the population. There are also clusters of Acadians in southwestern Nova Scotia, on Cape Breton Island, and through central and western Prince Edward Island. Other provinces have no official languages as such, but French is used as a language of instruction in courts and for other government services in addition to English. Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec allow for both English and French to be spoken in the provincial legislatures and laws are enacted in both languages. In Ontario, French has some legal status, but is not fully co-official. There are 11 indigenous language groups composed of more than 65 distinct languages and dialects. Several indigenous languages have official status in the Northwest Territories. Inuktitut is the majority language in Nunavut and is one of three official languages in the territory. Additionally, Canada is home to many sign languages, some of which are indigenous. American Sign Language ASL is spoken across the country due to the prevalence of ASL in primary and secondary schools. Due to its historical relation to the Francophone culture, Quebec Sign Language LSQ is spoken primarily in Quebec, although there are sizable Francophone communities in New Brunswick, Ontario, and Manitoba. Religion Canada is religiously diverse, encompassing a wide range of beliefs and customs. Although the Constitution of Canada refers to God and the monarch carries the title of Defender of the Faith, Canada has no official church, and the government is officially committed to religious pluralism. Freedom of religion in Canada is a constitutionally protected right, allowing individuals to assemble and worship without limitation or interference. The practice of religion is generally considered a private matter throughout society and the state, with Christianity in decline after having once been central and integral to Canadian culture and daily life. Canada has become a post-Christian, secular state. The majority of Canadians consider religion to be unimportant in their daily lives, but still believe in God. According to the 2021 census, Christianity is the largest religion in Canada, with Roman Catholics having the most adherents. Christians, representing 53.3% of the population in 2021, are followed by people having a religion slash no religion at 34.6%. Other faiths include Islam 4.9%, Hinduism 2.3%, Sikhism 2.1%, Buddhism 1.0%, Judaism 0.9%, and Indigenous spirituality 0.2%. Rates of religious adherence are steadily decreasing. Culture Canada's culture draws influences from its broad range of constituent nationalities and policies that promote a just society are constitutionally protected. Canada has placed emphasis on equality and inclusiveness for all its people. The official state policy of multiculturalism is often cited as one of Canada's significant accomplishments and a key distinguishing element of Canadian identity. In Quebec, cultural identity is strong, and there is a French-Canadian culture that is distinct from English-Canadian culture. As a whole, Canada is in theory a cultural mosaic of regional ethnic subcultures. Canada's approach to governance emphasizing multiculturalism, which is based on selective immigration, social integration, and suppression of far-right politics, has wide public support. Government policies such as publicly funded health care, higher taxation to redistribute wealth, the outlawing of capital punishment, strong efforts to eliminate poverty, strict gun control, a social liberal attitude toward women's rights like pregnancy termination and LGBTQ rights, legalized euthanasia, and cannabis use are indicators of Canada's political and cultural values.
Canadians also identify with the country's foreign aid policies, peacekeeping roles, the national park system, and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Historically, Canada has been influenced by British, French, and indigenous cultures and traditions. Through their language, art, and music, indigenous peoples continue to influence the Canadian identity. During the 20th century, Canadians with African, Caribbean, and Asian nationalities have added to the Canadian identity and its culture. Canadian humor is an integral part of the Canadian identity and is reflected in its folklore, literature, music, art, and media. The primary characteristics of Canadian humor are irony, parody, and satire. Symbols Themes of nature, pioneers, trappers, and traders played an important part in the early development of Canadian symbolism. Modern symbols emphasize the country's geography, cold climate, lifestyles, and the Canadianization of traditional European and indigenous symbols. The use of the maple leaf as a Canadian symbol dates to the early 18th century. The maple leaf is depicted on Canada's current and previous flags, and on the arms of Canada. Canada's official tartan, known as the maple leaf tartan, has four colors that reflect the colors of the maple leaf as it changes through the seasons green in the spring, bold in the early autumn, red at the first frost, and brown after falling. The arms of Canada are closely modeled after the royal coat of arms of the United Kingdom with French and distinctive Canadian elements replacing or added to those derived from the British version. Other prominent symbols include the national mighty toe of Marius Gedmer from sea to sea, the sports of ice hockey and lacrosse, the beaver, Canada goose, common loon, Canadian horse, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Canadian Rockies, and more recently the totem pole and an uksuk. Material items such as Canadian beer, maple syrup, toques, canoes, animal bars, butter tarts, and the Quebec dish of pouting are defined as uniquely Canadian. Canadian coins feature many of these symbols, the loon on the coin, the arms of Canada on the 50 cents piece, the beaver on the nickel. The penny, removed from circulation in 2013, featured the maple leaf. An image of the previous monarch, Queen Elizabeth Roman II, appears on zero bank notes and on the obverse of all current Canadian coins. Literature Canadian literature is often divided into French and English language literatures, which are rooted in the literary traditions of France and Britain, respectively. The earliest Canadian narratives were of travel and exploration. This progressed into three major themes that can be found within historical Canadian literature, nature, frontier life, Canada's position within the world, all three of which tie into the garrison mentality. In recent decades, Canada's literature has been strongly influenced by immigrants from around the world. Since the 1980s, Canada's ethnic and cultural diversity has been openly reflected in its literature. By the 1990s, Canadian literature was viewed as some of the world's best. Numerous Canadian authors have accumulated international literary awards, including novelist, poet, and literary critic Margaret Atwood, who received two Booker Prizes, Nobel laureate Alice Munro, who has been called the best living writer of short stories in English, and Booker Prize recipient Michael Ondach, who wrote the novel The English Patient, which was adapted as a film of the same name that won the Academy Award for Best Picture. L. M. Montgomery produced a series of children's novels beginning in 1908 with Anne of Green Gables. Media Canada's media is highly autonomous, uncensored, diverse, and very regionalized. The Broadcasting Act declares the system should serve to safeguard, enrich, and strengthen the cultural, political, social, and economic fabric of Canada. Canada has a well-developed media sector, but its cultural output, particularly in English films, television shows, and magazines, is often overshadowed by imports from the United States. As a result, 
the preservation of a distinctly Canadian culture is supported by federal government programs, laws, and institutions such as the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC, the National Film Board of Canada, NFB, and the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, CRTC. Canadian mass media, both print and digital and in both official languages, is largely dominated by a handful of corporations. The largest of these corporations is the country's national public broadcaster, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which also plays a significant role in producing domestic cultural content, operating its own radio and TV networks in both English and French. In addition to the CBC, some provincial governments offer their own public educational TV broadcast services as well, such as TV Ontario and Télé Québec. Non-news media content in Canada, including film and television, is influenced both by local creators as well as by imports from the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and France. In an effort to reduce the amount of foreign-made media, government interventions in television broadcasting can include both regulation of content and public financing. Canadian tax laws limit foreign competition in magazine advertising. Visual Arts Art in Canada is marked by thousands of years of habitation by its indigenous peoples. Historically, the Catholic Church was the primary patron of art in New France and early Canada, especially Quebec, and in later times, artists have combined British, French, indigenous, and American artistic traditions, at times embracing European styles while working to promote nationalism. The nature of Canadian art reflects these diverse origins, as artists have taken their traditions and adapted these influences to reflect the reality of their lives in Canada. The Canadian government has played a role in the development of Canadian culture through the Department of Canadian Heritage by giving grants to art galleries as well as establishing and funding art schools and colleges across the country and through the Canada Council for the Arts established in 1957, the National Public Arts Funder, helping artists, art galleries and periodicals, and thus contributing to the development of Canada's cultural works. Since the 1950s, works of Inuit art have been given as gifts to foreign dignitaries by the Canadian government. Canadian visual art has been dominated by figures such as painter Tom Thompson and by the Group of Seven. The Group of Seven were painters with a nationalistic and idealistic focus who first exhibited their distinctive works in May 1920. Though referred to as having seven members, Five artists Lauren Harris, A. Y. Jackson, Arthur Lismer, J. E. H. MacDonald, and Frederick Varley were responsible for articulating the group's ideas. They were joined briefly by Frank Johnston and by commercial artist Franklin Carmichael. A. J. Casson became part of the group in 1926. Associated with the group was another prominent Canadian artist, Emily Carr, known for her landscapes and portrayals of the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest Coast. Sports The roots of organized sports in Canada date back to the 1770s, culminating in the development and popularization of the major professional games of ice hockey, lacrosse, curling, basketball, baseball, association football, and Canadian football. Canada's official national sports are ice hockey, and lacrosse. Other sports such as volleyball, skiing, cycling, swimming, badminton, tennis, bowling and the study of martial arts are all widely enjoyed at the youth and amateur levels. Great achievements in Canadian sports are recognized by Canada's Sports Hall of Fame, while the Lou Marsh Trophy is awarded annually to Canada's top athlete by a panel of journalists. There are numerous other sport halls of fame in Canada, such as the Hockey Hall of Fame. Canada shares several major professional sports leagues with the United States. Canadian 
teams in these leagues include seven franchises in the National Hockey League, as well as three Major League Soccer teams and one team in each of Major League Baseball and the National Basketball Association. Other popular professional competitions include the Canadian Football League, National Lacrosse League, the Canadian Premier League, and the various curling tournaments sanctioned and organized by Curling Canada. Canada has enjoyed success both at the Winter Olympics and at the Summer Olympics, though particularly the Winter Games as a winter sports nation, and has hosted several high-profile international sporting events such as the 1976 Summer Olympics, the 1988 Winter Olympics, the 2010 Winter Olympics, and the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup. Most recently, Canada hosted the 2015 Pan American Games and 2015 Parapan American Games in Toronto, the former being one of the largest sporting event hosted by the country. The country is scheduled to co-host the 2026 FIFA World Cup alongside Mexico and the United States. Thank you for watching. Consider supporting the channel, leave a like and subscribe.